And one of the things that I want to talk about is one word. It's a dangerous word in the church. <laughs> and it's one word, and the one word is called balance. <laughs> and the reason why I say it's a dangerous word in the church because the only thing that church no folks know how to balance is church time. So, we, so, we, so, so, this conversation is, I like, it talk back and don't stir. I like, it's an it's a interacting thing. It makes me feel comfortable, right? But when you talk about balance to church folk, the first thing they say is, oh, yeah. Oh, we balancing church time and, you know, we're not church all week. We ain't doing all that, all that church, you know. So, we talking about balance in church. You're talking about me understanding what it is to put church over there and then my time over here. And I perfect that. And I want to make sure that the world knows that I got balance when it comes to church. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Got you, chat. But balance is dangerous because people take balance to be one thing, and like I said, it's you perfecting the fact that you understand what it is and not to show up for everything dealing with church. That's a church person's perspective of balance, right? But we got to understand that there's a thing of balance in checkbooks. You know, cable time with study time. Real balance, right? <laughs> And in that time with prayer time, right, we're talking about having balance, right? So this is true balance. This is not me balancing church time. It's me balancing all of my life, understanding the word balance and leaving it in the place to say, I need to balance everything, even real communication, right? Because the problem with that is that your likes and quick messages is not saying that you talk to me, Right? So there's still a level of communication and liking a post or responding to a post, right? So we got to understand what it is. But today, we're here to encourage the men, and I'm getting out of your way fast. Trust me. The lights are too bright. I like a classroom setting. I don't like standing up here. I love to teach, but not here. That's just me being honest, but... We got to encourage the dads today and give an understanding of what it is to have balance of not only being a dad, but being a parent, because we have parents in the room. I want to address the dads when we're talking about parenting, right? And then for those that don't have kids, this is called pre-understanding of, you know, we'll put the pre in there so you can have an understanding, not a rush, right? But we're understanding what it is to have balance. We want to make sure that the same things that we struggle with and the trauma that we had when we were younger, right, won't push our kids into the dark room. Because some of the things we went through as children pushed us into the dark room. Some experiences, some situations that we ended up walking into for the lack of, I would say, parents not being there. I won't say one thing. Some of the things we took upon ourselves to try to learn, and it created a whole world that placed us in a space that we had no clue of where we were going. So the enemy tried to trap us. Okay. I'm going to take my time if you don't mind. Good. <laughs> so let's talk about becoming the best dad we can be. So let's work. Let's go into it, right? And we're going to operate not out of a bitter place or a disappointing place, but we're going to operate out of a place that is trying to be the best dad that we can be. Meaning that we're not going to overdo the things that we did not get when we were younger just to please our kids. If that makes sense, right? So we fall into that trap of giving our kids what we didn't get right when we were younger and then filling that void that we had. Not what our kids have, but the void that we have, right, as being parents, right? And the only problem with that is this. We're pleasing ourselves and not our kids. So to please us and not them is backwards because we're happy and they're not. <laughs> Some parents get stuck in the mode of impressing. 
And I'm just talking to y'all, so bear, just be with me. So we get into this mode of impressing to make sure that people see that I'm taking care of my child. I am a good parent, a great parent, right? I am doing what I'm supposed to do. We get into the mode of just being seen. But the problem with that is this, and I've learned this as I was coming up, and it's a true statement, right? And it means simply this. How can I put this? The best way to see someone is not to look at them. They went over y'all head, but y'all will get it in a minute, right? So the best, pace, the best way to know a person or to see a person is not by looking at them. And let me give explanation to it. Because when people know that you're looking at them, they perform their best. Look at me. This is what I'm doing. You see, you see. But what happens is when you're not looking, the real them show up. So this means that if I am not looking at you, right, I will see who you really are. Y'all got quiet. We should be talking back and having a conversation, and now y'all done locked up. And what I'm just saying is that the best way to see a person is by not looking at them. Because when you're looking, you're getting that representative. And that representative will have you mistakenly thinking that this person is who they say they are, but they're not. So when you're not looking and they get a chance to take the mask off and sit down, right, the real them show up. So they're not performing anymore. It becomes a problem. So understand that. Be who you are when people are not looking. The same person when people are looking, right? That's character, right? That's who you are. That's who you are. Okay, back to balancing. Let's get it. Okay, so one of the most important things that we need as parents is balancing, right? And this is what I want to say. I'm going to touch two points, and I'm going to be fast, and I'm going to get out of the way. But here's the two points about parenting that I think is very important, right? And one of the points is this. Balance in provision with presence. Yes, that's good. That's good. Okay? So we got to understand what it is to be a provider and then still understand what it is to be present in our children's lives, right? Because it's very important, right, that we understand that this means a whole lot, right? And what we have to do is this, that we got to get the bag and we get it. It's the thing. We got to make the money. However, we can't be so much of a provider that we're not present, that the kids cannot have a moment to interact or even share emotional times, stress times, or times they don't understand what's going on in life because we're too busy, providing, right, and filling a void that we had by not getting provided for, okay? So, you know, two jobs, three jobs, doing all that you got to do to ensure the fact that your kids have what they need, what they want, shoes on their feet, all those kind of things, right, and you're doing all of that because what happened was in my childhood, I lacked that. The most pain I felt is at the place where as though I was not provided for. However, I wasn't provided for or had provision, but I'm just saying, or having that time spent. But there was an issue with me not getting what I want. Yeah. I vowed. I said my kids will never lack where I heard that when I was in the place that they are now. I would make sure that they will never understand the void that I felt because I will provide so I can't provide no more. And matter of fact, that makes us a man because the scripture says that we must be providers, right? So we overlook it. However, the lack of balance of it causes confusion in the household, right? Trying to get the bag, <laughs> leaving the kids with a void, right? Kid says, Daddy, where you been? I was at work. I thought you knew. Well, it don't matter to them. I don't care where you were. I needed you. I needed a conversation. Right? So we're going to make the moment true because balance is what's needed to be a great parent. So we're not going to hold grudges and we're not going to not forgive. We're going to forgive and we're going to move forward. But however, moving forward, we're going to deal with what it is to have true balance in the household. Right? Because I don't want to pat on the back because I bought you something. Right? That's not what I need. Right? You know, you thought you're doing a daggone thing by doing all this work and then bringing home the bacon, as they say, but your kids are suffering. Yeah, that's true. They're suffering quietly. Yeah. Right? Yes. And the problem with kids suffering quietly is that they start confiding in people they don't know need to confide in. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Pushing them to a dark room. Wow. 
opening up doors they don't need to have opened up, right? People taking advantage of the vulnerability that they see. We lack in balance. We're providing, holding up the provider badge, and our kids need a conversation about what happened to them in school or what was brought to them by a stranger or what they thought was right, right, because it satisfied and soothed them at the time of they, when they felt at their lowest. Yeah. They did not have us to talk to. They were fresh. They were full. They had it what they need, right? However, they didn't have that intimate time to be able to share. If you knock it quiet, please say amen, say something, say hello, but we're going to speak about what it is to have true balance as being a dad, a parent, in a household to a child. The pendulum has to swing both ways, right? I am a provider, right? However, I am here, right? I understand what it is, right, to make sure that we're not lacking that is financially, but also emotionally. Yes, We're going to try to make sure that we are fitting the vo- we are filling the void that can possibly be when we're not there. So we're going to ensure the fact that, hey, you have what you need, but then you have an understanding that I am also present in your life. Yes, right? You have to be present. Good time. Keep ticking. Yeah. Right? Constantly satisfying you and not them. We got to be careful of that. I spoke about that, but balance is needed, right? That is both, like I said, being a provider and having presence because know what? It's priceless. It is priceless. (laughs) An over provider means that there's no presence. But let's keep the balance the right way. Too much presence means that you're not providing. I'm going to swing the pendulum the right way, right? Because if I stay around you all the time and too much, and we hungry. Uh, on, After a while, I'm all talked out. There's nothing to talk about. I told you all I need to tell you I'm hungry. Now let's figure it out, right? <laughs> too much anything is bad. Too much of anything is bad. I'm sorry, English, right? Where's my water? I need some little help. Chat, I need something to sip on. Please. But too much of anything, right? Thank you, Chuck. It's not a, a, a good thing. Uh, too much of being a provider means that you're constantly out of the home. Though you're cashing checks and you're making sure that everybody's okay, you're not present. Then, too much of you sitting around and lounging around, you're tired of seeing each other. You know how it can be, right? Don't keep seeing you sitting in the same spot. We hungry. You know, they didn't call and said the phone bill's ready to cut off. And you're just sitting there. I'm here. Well, get lost. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so the pendulum needs to be swung both ways, right? And we're just having a conversation. We're going to be honest, right? This is about being a great dad. This is about building up to understand what it is to be a great dad. We're no longer holding grudges. We're no longer focusing on the past. We understand that. The era of the deadbeat dad we're trying to get rid of, right? And we're trying to be representatives or actually models of what it is to be a great dad. There's plenty of great dads in this church. I watch them all. I can name them all. You see them all. We have great dads here. And because of that, they need to be models, right? So we're no longer keep discussing what it is to be a deadbeat because what we have now is dads in front of other men showing them what it is to be men. Present. Not only providing, but present. That is the new look, right, of what it is to be a great dad. The moment of the bad dad has to go away, right? And we're not even going to keep putting it up here to be seen. We need them to be taught. So what we'll do is now take that and show the great dad or striving to be one because we're not perfect. And the issue with that is that I don't care how many times you get knocked down, you don't give up, you get up. So that shows what it is to be a great parent, I would say, right? That we get knocked down, we go through life, we're not perfect, however, we get up and not give up. That's right. Okay. All right? Okay. (laughs) Oh, we can do all things through Christ. 
I know being a great dad is one of them, right? Yeah. So listen to this. Buying a dress for the recital was amazing. But being present at this recital is even better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you don't buy the dress and tell them, just tell me how it was. I got to go to work. I just, you had what you need. I'm gone. I got that, right? Just let me know how it was. But I wanted to see you smiling there. That is priceless over what, even what you bought. Right? We got to understand that, that we didn't bought the ball in the game, but how fun is it to have the ball if I can't play catch? Right? It's the balance of a thing that's mattering on this morning. And the time is ticking and I love it. But it's the balance of the thing that makes a great dad, a great parent, right? Because we cannot overdo one thing. I hope y'all getting this. I, I want to keep reiterating so we can get an understanding of it. For the parents and the parents to be, right? We're practicing and understanding what it is to grow to be a great parent, great dad, great mom. However, too much of anything is not good. Some people don't like too many hugs, but I'm just saying. Stop, Seanette. Oh, God, help me. Listen, the enemy needs no room to coach, raise, or inform your child. That's right. That's right. That void will be filled by me. Okay? That's having the balance. That not only do I come in and we're eating, I'm spending time while we're eating. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to discuss, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're not eating without me, and the enemy is saying, go over there and do that. Call them and do this. Uh -huh. Why are you staying here with that? Nobody's here. Who's listening? The sad thing is the wrong person to start listening. Right. Yeah. The wrong person to start coaching. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find your child in a space and place, and you'll say, well, wow, I didn't get them everything they needed. I mean, what's happening? What's happening was I was trying to tell you something three months ago, but you weren't here to hear it. We didn't built a, a bad thing here. I got 10 minutes left, y'all. My God. No, no, no. <laughs> the time is took. I'm joking. Well, let me try to hurry up with nine minutes. Let me tell y'all this. Here's another thing that we can have to take notes on, right? That will also be a great thing when it comes to being a dad and parenting. And it is very serious to understand that discipline and friendship yeah. Yeah. is needed, right? Now, a lot of us in here can say, we, got our, we understand what it is. We got our butt beat. We don't play. We understand what it was, right? Our parents didn't play. We got disciplined, right? And we understand that, right? But the problem with that is too much of it left us, left us emotionally disturbed, right? Scared to do things, scared to ask questions, scared to be able to dream, right? So the problem comes with that is that a little bit too much discipline causes an issue which will still cause a child to run to somebody else. I can't talk to who's going to bang me in my face. I can't really have a true conversation about what's happening to someone that's going to judge me when I tell them what it is. It's a lot of discipline in the midst of me trying to grow. Too much. But we need it. This is why balance, I'm trying to give you this word and how Serious the word is, is just not balance. Yeah, it's balance. Because you can't go without the discipline, though. Too much of it is an issue, right? Because sometimes you got to be a friend, an encourager, right? Right? A supporter, as it should be said, right? But however, too much supporting eliminates the discipline. Now, I hope I'm making sense with all this back and forth, right? To give you an understanding of what swinging this pendulum is, right? It's balance that you have to have. If you don't give it, you lose. That's why we can do all things through. And with the godly teaching and the godly understanding, we'll be doing and striving to be, I would say, right? Y'all got quiet again. Spare the raw, spoil the child. I'm going to tell you what sounds better. Lack of discipline says you hate your child. That's, true. That's, in the Bible. That's scripture, right? So you view it different. It's funny. Oh, you spare the raw, you spoil the child. Child spoil. Oh, he's spoiled. Oh, you hate your child like that? That you don't feel like they need to be disciplined? You must hate them. No, I don't hate my child. Well, the scripture said if you don't discipline them, you hate them. I didn't make it up. 
I didn't say for you to do what you need to do. I'm telling you that we're following Scripture in order to live. The Scripture tells us that if we do not do this, you hate them, right? You will embarrass your mom in the long run. You'll be that kid in the neighborhood they talk about, right? Something wrong with him and his family. Oh, my God. <laughs> but the wisdom of discipline and friendship, still being in charge, but still being supportive. I hope this is good for y'all, as it is good for me to have an understanding of not a bashing message today, right? Of all oh, these dads are no good. By the way, I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to go too far to the side, but I'm talking to Elder Jerome when we have a conversation. I said, Jerome, I don't see too many Father's Day commercials. I don't know what's going on. They always do us like that. And it was like, well, you know, they're trying to do away with how it looks to have a household with a father yeah, and a yeah. mom inside of it yeah. because if they're celebrating the moms, they don't have to show the whole family, but celebrating the dad brings the wife and the kids and they don't want that model doing pride month, but I'll let it go. So we're not going to show celebrating the dad during this time because we need to see the dad, the mom, the family, and them smile. This is not the representative. Let me stop. I said, wow, oh, Lord, I thought they were just trying to do away with the dads. They treat us bad anyway. Another time, a drill, I'm going to throw it in the trash. But you would think that, right? But it's deeper than just that. It's deeper than what they have to show on television. And if I fall over this thing right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a conversation with the, uh, Yolanda Steph. <laughs> Now, we understand what discipline is, but too much friendship and being supportive is kind of dangerous, right? So if you want to have a sleepover, oh, it's fine. If you want to go over your friend's house, oh, it's fine. If you want to go to a place that you not say, oh, it's fine. You know, just for the sake of being happy, I'm going to be the good parent. And you can go wherever you want to go. I'm supporting you. It's your life. You know, it's a new time. I'm going to make sure that you be able to enjoy yourself and go out and not going to hold you up. And uh, guess what? They're not going to like it, but the day you need a background check on your fourth grade friend and his mother, and his neighbor, and his neighbor, and the uncle, right? And everybody else that visit the house that you plan on going on. I need a whole list of who's there. Who's coming, who's going, and, and who normally stops by when they feel like it. You can't provide me that you're not going. Yeah. You're the meanest person in the world. You're going to thank me later. I need a whole background check. Hey, I want a background check on your teacher. I want to know everybody. There's some old freaky diggy people out here. People be having a whole agenda. With your child in mind. Yeah, we getting, a, we getting around the representative, chap. I'm tired of the representative. They dress so nice and smile so good. At night, they take their teeth out and put the bonnet on and, you know, whip out the, whip out the laptop, right? And the child porn is on the side. So the problem with being overly supportive is that you can miss being disciplined. So here's a Father's Day message without the bash. I got three minutes. I'm not even finished. Jesus. Here's a message without the father's bashing of the deadbeats, right? Here's a message about, okay, taking the reign of what it is to look to be a great dad, strive to be a great dad, right? And to show what it is to be a great dad, right? This is the message today, right? That we need balance and we need to use balance in order to be able to raise our kids yeah, yeah. in a godly way. Not in their way, but a godly way, right? And then we're supported enough to know that their dreams is their dreams and we don't live our dreams through them. Yeah. Ensuring that they do what we wanted to do. 
So we'll back you as long as you're doing what, you know. Harold, I wanted to sing. Where you want to go? I always love to fix cars. Where you want to go to do that? I, that? Let's do that. That's what you want to do. Yeah. I want to teach you something else different, you know, something that you don't ever want to do. <laughs> I got to laugh. I'm sorry. Sometimes I'll be saying some stuff be cracking me up, right? But we want to have that balance and provision, y'all. Provision and presence. I'm sorry. We want to have that, right? So we're not working so much that we miss the importance of the presence and the time spent, right? We don't want too much presence without the provision, because like I said, you will lack what's, what you need. But you be always in somebody's face without an income. That's an irritating. Yeah. I mean, you didn't irritate me. I just woke up, but you irritate me. You stand here again. Go to <laughs> You know it's bad when they start saying, you ain't talking to your friends or nothing. You ain't going. You don't want to go outside or something. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. That <laughs> boy ain't got 10 cents, but he got a game control in his hand. He's still playing the game. He's spending a little too much time having fun. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to end with this. Let me let y'all go. I got to go. Jesus. I got a lot more, too. It's amazing. But listen, um, I'll just say, say this. We need balance with discipline and friendship. Yes, we are so much. Not only somebody that you can talk to, but somebody that you can trust and, and have hope and faith in that we won't be hungry tomorrow. It's great to know that. That you've understood what discipline is, that you understand that food is on the table, but we get a chance to talk while we're eating, right? Because something might have happened too easy that I need to share, right? Only to hold it. Because it happened when I was 10, and we're just talking about it when I'm 16. That's kind of wrong, right? So let's talk about the same week it happened yeah. because we build that trust. We build that intimacy, right? That, 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 that positive interaction is, is deep because the problem is that there's something that I keep and I share, and it's called the power of the peer, and parents struggle with it. And remember that. The peer has a lot of power. Yes. These kids listen to these peers. Yes. They think we are outdated and don't understand what's going on, but these peers know what's going on. However, they're being very manipulative. Right? We don't want the door locked. Unlock it. Want to be able to step in. You don't lock me out. Open it, or the whole door will be on the side of the wall. Along with the nails. Up to the side of the wall. That's right. But listen, I, oh Lord, the zeros is up. Listen, too, too much discipline will cause a child to confide in ones that will take advantage of them, right? Too much friendship and not enough discipline will allow them to become reckless and go without accountability. Right? The lack of support will cause them to look into the wrong places for support, and they can become taken advantage of and used in a perverted way. Remember that. Remember that. Because, see, what will happen is this. Balance will play a major part in what it is to try to keep your kid out of that dark room, right? It's important. I'm trying to tie this together, y'all. Help me out. <laughs> I just love it. Conversations are great, right? But it'll help them from feeling rejected, neglected, and hopeless, right, while being coached by them demons, doing what makes them feel good, but it's the wrong thing, right? Yeah. Good dose of balancing can be a great step towards great parenting. That's my message today, y'all. I would hope it blessed somebody today. And I would hope that the, the understanding of what it is of swinging the pendulum, I will keep saying it, right, of balance, right, to ensure that you're disciplined when necessary, right, and you understand that I can also come back, right, 
and be present to have a conversation with what you need and what you need to talk about, right? And that also I understand that I can provide and still make room for being present, right? Because overdoing it will kill a relationship. And you look good disrespecting me. So now I got to remind you what I put on your feet in order for you to respect me. And it's backwards. So if I got to keep telling the kid, I done bought you them shoes, you talking to me any kind of way, something went wrong. That's right. It's too much providing without, without our presence, right? We missed it somewhere, right? It's too much of that friendship. I just want you to smile. And I just want you to be happy. And that just says I want you to be taken advantage of. And I want you to have lack of accountability, right? And I want you to live how you want to live. And if something happens, it happens, but you're happy, right? That is on us. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Lack of discipline says you hate them. I like that one better. Cause people to do what they're supposed to do, right? But I wanted to give an understanding of what it was to have that, right? To be able to know what it is to have friendship, but also still show that I am in charge. I listen to you to support you, but I still give you an understanding of what you need to do while I'm supporting you. And if it doesn't sound right, I have enough discipline in me, right, to let you know that I don't like it and it's not happening. It's not good for you. Amen? Amen. Amen.